O my Lord, Sri Krishna's son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality of God, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods have placed him into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitra vocha. Paramo nirmatsanam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. mahamuni krite. Kimva purer ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avurudyate tra. Kriti bihi susu subis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataro galitam falam sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Malayam Mohur Aho Raska Bhuvi Bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shimad, okay. Shinvata Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hedyantak Stohi Badrani. Vidunati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, 
is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naistiki in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kamaloba dayas chaye chete etar anavidam by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnanam when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya Siyante chasya karmani drista evat manishwari Thus bhakti yoga severs the, severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee <coughs> in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Text 39. Punascha yachamanaya Jata rupam adat prabhu Taturnitam madam kamam Rajo vairam chapanchamam The trans translation by Srila Prabhupada. The personality of Kali asks for something more and because of his begging the king gave him permission to live where there is gold because wherever there is gold, there is also falsity, intoxication, lust, envy, and enmity. Wow, even more than where the four regulative principles are broken. Wow. <clears throat> Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vinanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Although Maharaj Pariksit gave Kali permission to live in four places, it was very difficult for him to find the places because during the reign of Maharaj Pariksit, there were no such places. Therefore, Kali asked the king to give him something practical which could be utilized for his nefarious purposes. Maharaj Pariksit thus gave him permission to live in a place where there is gold, because wherever there is gold, there are all the above-mentioned four things, and over and above them, there is enmity also. So, the personality of Kali became gold-standardized. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, gold encourages falsity, intoxication, prostitution, envy, and enmity. 
Even a gold standard exchange and currency is bad. Gold standard currency is based on falsehood because the currency is not on a par with the reserved gold. The basic principle is falsity because currency notes are issued in value beyond that of the actual res reserved gold. This artificial inflation of currency by the authorities encourages prostitution of the state economy. The price of commodities become artificially inflated because of bad money or artificial currency. Our artificial currency notes. Bad money drives away good money. Instead of paper money, actual gold coins should be used for exchange, and this will stop prostitution of gold. Gold ornaments for women may be allowed by control, not by quality, but by quantity. This will discourage lust, envy, and enmity. When there is actual gold currency in the form of coins, the influence of gold in producing falsity, prostitution, etc., will automatically cease. There will be no need of an anti-corruption ministry for another term of prostitution and falsity of purpose. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Well, the United States used to be on the gold standard but Nixon changed that. President Nixon changed that. And he said, no more gold standard. Now we just base the value of the dollar on people's confidence in the United States to blow up everybody else in the world, their ability to be the prominent nation in the world. So, uh, now the government can print as much paper money as it wants, or needs, let's say, not as it wants, but it needs. And uh, it's not backed up by anything except your confidence in the government of, the United, the government of the United States and their ability to defeat all other nations, economically and militarily. The day they can't do that, the standard, I mean, the uh, American dollar will no longer be the primary currency in the, in the world. It will be replaced by something else, like the Chinese yen or the Arabic this or the European that. And therefore, there is great competition now, or the Russian ruble. There's great competition now to try and uh, topple the uh, American dollar as the currency of the world, the exchange currency of the world. And it could happen because it all depends on the ability of the United States to be the most prominent nation economically and militarily. Okay, so uh, what's happening is there's this terrible comp competition taking place Europe against pitted, pitted against the United States, the United States pitted against China, and Europe, Russia pitted against the United States, and so forth. This, this competition of who's going to be this, the prominent nation in the world and who's going to have the best economy and so forth. But here we see uh, that whether it's the gold standard or the fiat standard. The fiat standard in the United States is, it's based on your confidence in the American dollar. Uh, as long as it can buy things, and you can, uh, uh, you can buy things with the dollar, that, and, and you, you can earn enough money to buy things, then that confidence uh, keeps the dollar afl uh, floating. <coughs> but, what can destroy that is rampant inflation. When there's inflation, meaning the government has to keep borrowing money, and the more money it borrows, it has to pay interest. And when the government is not able to pay the interest, then there's a collapse. So when the amount of money borrowed 
far exceeds the amount of money that the government receives in taxes and thus is not able to pay the interest. And this has happened in Iceland and in Cyprus and a few other places. Then there's uh, bankruptcy of the government because as long as it can pay the interest, it stays afloat, but if it can't pay the interest, because the interest equals the amount of money that they collect in taxes, then it, it collapses. So what do they do? They think up different ways of taxing the people. Just like Obamacare was not really to give people health care. It was a, to increase taxes on the people. Now, all the dummies, they say, oh, I'm going to get this for free. Now, there's nothing for free. But if you're ignorant, you don't understand how the system works. And therefore, when it was challenged in the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, Justice Roberts said, well, <clears throat> I, I'm going to help my buddy uh, Obama. Uh, he, did made a, he did make a mistake, and uh, what his whole system he can't just uh, tax people, force them to pay into the system. That's against the Constitution. But it's possible to make a tax. So actually, Obamacare is actually a tax. It's not uh, what he says it was. It's actually a tax. And he's got the right to uh, uh, make a tax uh, with the help of the uh, uh, Congress of the United States. So he declared it was a tax. It was not, it was not uh, uh, a freebie <laughs> to the people. Of course, uh, any ignorant people don't understand how the system works. So why, why is it a tax? Because the government has been robbing the Social Security uh, uh, account uh, for uh, at least since the 1950s or late 1950s. In other words, they're setting aside money to pay the people uh, who uh, are forced to pay this uh, social security tax, you know, companies and individuals. Okay, so, but they're robbing the account, which means their only hope is that enough people die before they get their social security payments and then enough, enough people uh, come in to pay the Social Security taxes uh, so it stays, uh, stays uh, afloat. It's called a Ponzi scheme. You, they have to keep bringing in new people to pay Social Security to pay the older people who are not working anymore because they rob the account. They, they rob the bank, basically. So they have to keep coming up with new taxes to keep the whole system afloat. But people don't like to be taxed, so they call it Obamacare. You know, free, uh, free uh, health care for 20 million people. Well, how many people are there in the country? There's a lot more than 20 million people. But there were some people who didn't have, uh, you know, uh, health care. They, they couldn't afford it when it was uh, only run by the private sector. So they were able to sign up uh, 20 million, but it's not enough 20 million people. They have to sign up many more people to keep, keep the system afloat. So anyway, we won't go, it's too complicated uh, at this point. But the main thing is that there's prostitution of the economy. That's what Prabhupada says. He says, prostitution of the state economy by inflation of currency by the state. Uh, you, you, inflation of currency is, right now, they have what's called the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not completely under the control of the government. It was started in, I think, 1913 because, uh, and it has the sole right to print money. So the, the way the Federal Reserve makes money is they print paper money that may cost them only one or two cents. And they sell it. They sell it for 100 cents to banks. And they charge interest 
on top of that to the banks. And then the banks make money by selling money to people like you and me to buy houses and cars and washing machines and this thing and that thing. And they charge more interest than what they have to pay to the Federal Reserve. So it's, it's it, and, and they're the only ones that have control over printing money. And how do they control the system, uh, the economic system, whether it's the United States or India? I mean, everyone is, is, has, has paid into this way of cheating. India also and many other countries. So they try and control the amount of dollars that uh, circulate in, in the system. Now, when there's an economic, uh, when there's an economic boom, they hold back the printing. When there's an economic downturn, they increase the printing, right? Now, but they can't increase the printing indefinitely because if they do that, then you have too much inflation and, and that's another problem too because the, 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 there'll be a crash of the economy. So they play this balancing game all the time by controlling the amount of money that goes into the system. Right. Anyway, uh, it's all cheating, but it's done in a uh, so-called regulated way of cheating. <laughs> and and when, when there's not enough money to pay interest on the, on the tremendous amount of money that the United States borrows, then they have to think up new ways to tax the people. Just like, what did, what, did, uh, uh, what did Biden say like this week? He said, we're gonna go back. We're gonna eliminate all the tax breaks that, that uh, this idiot Trump made, and we're gonna go back to the old way of taxing the people. What was the old way? Before Re Reagan became president, companies in the United States had to pay up to 80% of their profit to the government and tax. It's like, it's like a socialist country. It's like uh, uh, Sweden, where the companies have to pay 80%. Are you ready for that problem? <laughs> uh, your company pay 80% tax? And then, and then when Reagan became president, he, he he, he made it much lower. He brought it down to 35 percent. You know, so, but Biden is, is threatening. He's going to do this. You know? So anyway, people get what they deserve. You know, uh, they want free things. So what do they do when the government brings in so much more money? What do they do? They give it out to special interests. Like they might agree to. Uh, give reparations to all the black people in the United States for slavery. They might agree, this, they, might, they, they, could, they could agree to 10,000 things, you know. White people don't get any more loans, only black people get loans. They, could, they can make all kinds of rules like that now. So, although it's unconstitutional, but you know, they, they can try and get away with it. So anyway, what we're saying is that this is called the pro what Prabhupada says here in the purport, prostitution of the state economy by inflation of the currency by the state. You see how intelligent Prabhupada is. I mean, he, he knows everything, everything material and spiritual. You can't cheat him, right? But our, our problem is we don't read. We don't read the Bhagavatam. And, and we, even if we read it, we, we, sl we uh, what's it called, floss over it. We just pass by it and don't actually catch what, it actually, what he's actually saying. Right. Now I'm explaining it to you, getting an idea how what he's saying here is exactly what's going on today. And it's been going on for a long time in the United States. Right. So his solution to it, even though he says earlier in the purport, the gold standard is junk. It's cheating. And even using gold coins is not good. But then later in the purport, it says the solution to stop the cheating with the gold, the standard, is to use gold coins. Well, they used to use gold coins in the United States, right? And there wasn't, credit, there were no credit cards, there were no mortgages, nothing like that. You could only buy things with what you had if you don't have it. So then what happened was there was the gold rush. They, they, they found gold in Alaska and, and, uh, and Western states 
and people went crazy. They just, you know, everybody, you know, got a gun and they came to the West and they were shooting their way through the Indian reservations and killing buffaloes and they were panning for gold in California all the way up to Alaska. And people who didn't even have an education could hardly even speak English. They were becoming at least more wealthy than before. So after spending maybe five years panning for gold in Alaska, if they didn't die because of the freezing cold and different things, they came back and they were able to buy a farm and, and uh, be somewhat independent. So this, this, if you read American history, you'll see, I mean, the real American history, you'll see, it's always been a tough time for people to make a living. You know. <coughs> and it still is today. And there's always been people who are more clever than others who uh, become rich b by exploiting people. And, uh, and they just become richer and richer. And the people are exploited. They're able to live, but they're working so hard that, uh, and they of, often were working in places where there was a lot of contamination, like mines and factories, and they were dying, you know, rather quickly before they reach even 60 years old because of the unhealthy working conditions. So there's been a lot of misery in this country. That's why Prabhupada says it's not actually a m economically advanced country because people have to work so hard just to make a living, the most people. And there's a few people that make a lot of money by exploiting the other people. So that, when, when the exploitation becomes too much, then you have communism. So this country almost became a communist country in the 1930s because of the terrible depression that took place. And communism became very, very prominent but then because of World War II, it saved the United States. And because of Roosevelt, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was a socialist. He was not actually a capitalist. And he socialized a lot of things in the United States. He started Social Security and other things. But then, you know, because the United States won the war, and what they did is, you know, they bombed Germany and, and most of Europe into, into uh, uh, dust. So, and they, they bombed, of course, they, they, they ruined Japan with the atomic bomb. So what did they do? They funded the rebuilding of Europe and Japan. But how did they do that? By giving money to American companies to rebuild Europe <laughs> and Japan. So that means that means that America became rich. There was, war, there, was, there was work for all those soldiers that went to war. When they came back, they were, they were able to find work and earn a living and get a, a house, uh, buy a house on, with a mortgage and buy a car and buy a washing machine and a dryer and also go on vacations. And, uh, and this way, the economy boomed in the 1950s uh, and then 19, so you see that war sometimes is a big money-making pro uh, prospect for the winner. And if, you, if you're in a poor country and you want to rebuild it, declare war against the United States, right? Let them bomb you a little bit and then surrender and then they'll rebuild it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and make it modern. So they rebuilt Germany so good that Germany became a superpower, economic superpower. They re rebuilt, rebuilt Japan so good that Japan became a superpower, threatening the United States, right, uh, e economically. See. So you want to you want to buy a new house? Declare war against the United States. You know, <laughs> you know they, they'll bomb your house, then they'll rebuild it for you. You know. Okay, so uh, Prabhupada here is, is, is just, I mean, he's amazing. It's a short purport, but yet it's exactly what's happening. And most people don't understand. Most people don't understand economy. They don't understand the Federal Reserve. They don't understand, you know, what's called deficit spending. 
Deficit spending means you, d you spend more money than you have. And as long as you pay interest on it, you're okay. So a lot of people max their credit cards, right? And they have to pay so much interest at one point that they can't buy anything. They just have to earn the money to pay the interest. Then they figure out, well, wait a minute. I heard that this other guy down the street, he went bankrupt. And they wiped out his debt. And, the, and then he got uh, four or five new credit cards. <laughs> so if you go bankrupt and can't pay your credit cards, you go bankrupt, you, you declare bankruptcy. Uh, and about six months later, the credit card companies will start sending you credit cards. Is that right? <laughs> you see, the whole system is cheating. The whole system is cheating. And, and it's, the cheating is on such a big level that people are afraid to even talk about it because it could, you know, if, this, if the system collapses, that means everybody's cheating collapses also, you know. Okay, so the artif this artificial inflation of currency by the authorities encourages prostitution of the state economy. The price of commodities becomes artificially inflated because of bad money. Bad money means printing money that has no, no uh, backing to it at all, except people's confidence. And if they lose the confidence, the value of the money loses. It's, uh, the value of the money is, is lessened. In other words, it'll take more dollars to buy the same amount of things that you could buy with one dollar before, right? And, it, and uh, the price of commodities becomes artificially inflated because of bad money or artificial currency notes. Bad money drives away good money. Now, for example, you've heard about bitcoins, right? That's another huge cheating business. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you hear, bitcoins have gone up so much and so many people made money. And then the next week, said, bitcoins have crashed and they're going down and everybody lost their money. You know who's making money from bitcoins? It's not that the little trader uh, who's smoking marijuana and on the internet all day long and figured that he could make some money to buy more marijuana by, by buying a bitcoin, right? And after he buys the bitcoin, it goes up somewhat, you know, and he's really happy, he buys some more bitcoins. And after he's bought about 10 bitcoins, it crashes. And then he loses everything and he gets really disgusted. And then he hears that it goes back up again. You see, it's like the stock market. Sometimes it crashes, it goes up. So Bitcoin is another thing. You know, it's all based on cheating. The only people who make money from Bitcoins are the people who manufacture them. But to manufacture it, you have to invest several hundred thousand dollars to get a machine that can print a Bitcoin, right? So you have to have money to make money with Bitcoins. You know? But the people that buy them, it's like, it's, it's gambling. It's pure gambling. And you don't know when it's going to go up. You don't know when it's going to go down. It's being controlled by other people. And the stock market is the same thing. It's gambling. And it's, like, it's just like you understand what gambling is when you go to a casino. And let's say you're, you're throwing the dice, you know, on the roulette table or whatever, right? You know, and you're going, Haribo. <laughs> right? You know. And then sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But when you lose, all your money that's in the middle of the table, right? You see the coupier, the, the guy who's running the table. And they use these French terms, you know. He goes like this, and he pulls it all over. to All your money goes to his side. So there you see that what gambling is, you know. The, some, somebody wins, somebody loses, right? But you say, oh, no, but the stock market can't be like that. Of course it is like that. When you lose money, somebody else made money on you. You think, oh, the stock market went down. Everybody lost money. That's not true. It's exactly like the c casino. If you lose money, somebody else made that money. Right? Because there's two ways of making money on the stock market. You can make money when it goes up. You can also make money when it goes down, but most people don't understand how it works. So here we see that this whole thing is cheating. Everywhere is cheating. 
And most people, you know, just don't understand how it's working. But here Prabhupada explains the whole thing in, a, in one paragraph. This is a one paragraph purport. Bad money drives away good money. Instead of paper currency, actual gold coins should be used for exchange, and this will stop prostitution of gold. Gold ornaments for women may be allowed by control, not by quality, but by quantity. This will discourage lust, envy. In other words, there's a lim limit to how much gold you can buy for go as far as gold ornaments go. This will discourage lust, envy, and enmity. Enmity means like hatred. So you see, the, the way money is handled can breed lust, anger, or and lust, envy, and, and, and anger. And you can see this happening all the time. Uh, like, if you ever go to the ATM machine, you put your credit card in there, and you want to take out $200, and then you don't get $200, you get a slip of paper that says you're overdrawn, and you don't get your card back. The, 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 the ATM machine eats your card. So then you go and say, what's going on here? You know, what is this? You know, I have money in my account, and I want to take out money, and you, you, they didn't give me back my credit card. So they said, well, wait a minute. Let's take a look at your account. They look at your account. Your account is overdrawn. I said, what do you mean it's overdrawn? I, I, mean, I put, uh, last week I put in my paycheck. It was, uh, you know, uh, $2,000. They said, yeah, but somebody bought something for $3,000. You're overdrawn, and you have to pay that money back right away. Well, you know, who, who took the money out? The account, right? Could be a family member, or it could be some thief that figured out how to access your account. That happens also. You know, just like right now, uh, people are getting phone calls. Uh, you pick up the phone. Hello, this is the Social Security uh, Agency of the United States government, and uh, we have uh, detected that there is some fraud on your account, and uh, we have closed your account, and uh, we're going to. Uh, uh, charge you with a, uh, you know, a penalty. The person is frightened, right? And they, they cancel their, uh, their Social Security card, and you have to pay a, a penalty, you know. You say, whoa, 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 what can I do? You have to immediately send, you know, $500 to the, this account. So where's the account? That's none of your business. This is the Social Security Agency of the United States. Yeah, the account is in Saudi Arabia somewhere or in Nigeria. You know. <laughs> the whole thing is, is, is false. But there, many people are getting that phone call right now. I got that phone call last week at least 10 times. And I, the first time I heard it, I got, I got worried. I said, what happened? You know? You know? But then you know, I said, well, wait a minute. Let me look into this. You know, so I, I, I went to my uh, phone. I, I typed in, you know, is there fraud on, uh, by telephone uh, claiming to be, someone claiming to be representing the Social Security? And I, I, I typed it in. It came up on the Social Security, uh, government Social Security webpage. It said, there's a fraud going on now. Uh, last year, they netted approximately, uh, uh, you know, maybe Three three million dollars this year. It's gone up to half a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. You do it on your phone right now. Look up. Is there fraud? Uh, and the social is there fraud by telephone? People calling up and saying they represent uh, they are the Social Security agency, and your card has been canceled, and you must pay a, uh, a fine. You see. That everywhere in the society today, whether it's in the schools with education, whether it's in the banking system, whether it's in uh, doctors and lawyers and dentists, and it's cheating. It's all pervasive. And the worst, the doctors and the dentists, they're, they're completely cheating the people. Okay, so. Uh, are there any questions? If you see anything? What's it say? Come up, uh, re read it here. Yeah. 
If you get that phone call, you can say, oh, where should I send the money? And say, well, you, I'll give you the bank. I say, okay, thank you very much. And just hang up. targeting personal information resources. And then here it talks about beware of social security phone scams. Ah, that's it, right there. <laughs> so the Social Security Administration and the Office of Inspector General continue to receive reports of scammers impersonating SSA employees over the phone in re to request personal information or money. Imposters may threaten you and demand immediate payment to avoid arrest or legal action. Do not arrest, fall. arrest. That's yes. that's enough to scare everybody. Yes. <laughs> Do not fall for it. SSA employees will never threaten you for information or promise a reward or resolution in exchange for personal information or money. Do not use caller ID to verify that the caller is a government employee. Many scam calls official government numbers such as SSA's national 1-800 number, social security fraud hotline, local security, social security field offices, SSA press office, and local police number. Imposters may use legitimate names and phone numbers of SSA employees. If the card wow. demands sensitive personal information payments via gift card or prepaid debt card or wire transfer, it is a scam. Wow. If the caller makes threats when you do not comply with their request, it is a scam. Yes. If you receive uh, a suspicious call, hang up. Do not give them money or personal information. Report the scam at oigsa.gov slash report. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, praise God and pass the ammunition. <laughs> You see what's going on in this country? And before, they used to, there was another big scam. They would, they would call you up and say, uh, hello, uh, your husband is being kept by the uh, Homeland Security. He tried to get into the, gov uh, into the United States from India, but now he's under arrest, and you have to get him out of, your, uh, out of the uh, jail. You have to send immediately uh, $5,000 to the following uh, address. Believe me, this went on. In fact, some of our devotees got that call because, you know, the, the, they're so clever. They, they find out through uh, social media who went to India because there was some sickness or because they went, you know, and the wife is in the United States, the husband's in India. So when, when the, the husband's away, they call the wife up and they, 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 they give the story and they freak out. They freak out and they, they send the money because they actually think it's real. That, that, uh, in the business side, we actually almost uh, fell for it, almost fell for it. <laughs> in the business side, because you have some accountants you know, and so on, right? So we typically send requests like, okay, approve this payment and so on. So they try to, uh, they, it's called the phishing. So they actually make the emails look like it's coming from me. And then it goes to my accountant or, you know. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, that's, that's a huge one. And then um, one day, actually, my accountant, she saw that she didn't pay attention to the actual email because they match the email. And if you don't pay attention, so they make it look like, hey, I'm in a meeting. Um, we need to make this payment as quickly as possible because uh, I'm trying to close this deal or whatever. So, they, you know, they make it look like as if it's, if it's, it's real. common pattern, right? Yeah. So the... They sent like that, and then you know my accountant actually wired about forty thousand dollars. But when that person was actually pestering, like saying, that, "Hey, did you send it? Did you send it?" Like, then she got suspicious. So, but she sent it actually in the afternoon around three o'clock, which is after the wire. Oh, yeah. Time. So they didn't send it. Yeah. So we were able to stop it. The detective overnight were able to stop it. Wow. <laughs> Otherwise, if it is like the next morning, yeah. once it goes out, it's 
John. That's I've never even heard of that one. That's yeah, that's it's, it's a huge one. Though. Wow. <laughs> and the, and the best one is, you get a email. Saying, My name is Boumedine Ahmed Alwa, and I am the president of uh, Burkima Fasio, and uh, I have uh, forty-five billion dollars in a bank in Switzerland. But I need your help to transfer some of that money. I'm willing to give you five million dollars if you will agree to receive this transfer. You know, so people think, "Wow, this is God sending this to me." You know, uh, this 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 leader of a country in Africa is wants me to help them move the, some of their money from uh, Switzerland. And he says, "Yeah, all you have to do is you just have to pay the uh, the transfer amount. It's and, and then you'll get all this money. You know, the transfer amount is like five thousand uh. dollars. So what's five thousand dollars? I'm going to get back, you know, five million dollars, right? <laughs> <laughs> you see, see, they play on the greed of the people, <laughs> and many people, many people have done it. Many, many people have done it. And some guy sitting in a, in a." Uh, in an internet cafe in Nigeria, sending out you know hundreds and thousands of emails to people around the world, you know, and uh, and he's bound to get one person somewhere in one country or another. It could be Germany, it could be United States, it could be anywhere, you know. And they make their living by doing that. So there's cheating, uh, unbelievable cheating all over the place, and hardworking, honest people get cheated. You were going to be cheated out of forty thousand dollars. That's no small amount of money. That would have really hurt you, right? Yeah, it would have hurt me. We were up the whole night trying to get through the banks and the bank's banks, and so it was like a challenge. And <laughs> lucky we were able to come. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the world. Of huh? Welcome to the world of Kali. Yeah. My God. Okay. So there was one other thing I wanted to discuss, but there's not enough time, so I'll have to do it tomorrow. Haribo. <laughs> All glories to Srila Prabhupada Kije. Beware of the internet and the telephone. And beware of what you put on your Facebook account and Instagram account. Better I don't I don't have any of those things. I don't want them either. <laughs> They're very dangerous. Adibo.